Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, in the last couple of weeks or so, the hair loss community has absolutely lost their minds all over grapefruit of all things. Everybody has been talking non-stop about grapefruit or grapefruit juice and whether grapefruit interacts with medications for treating hair loss. Some people are suggesting that grapefruit decreases the efficacy of 5-AR blockers like finasteride or dutasteride, while others are saying grapefruit makes finasteride stronger by increasing its absorption or potentiating its effects. Still, others are worried about how grapefruit affects oral minoxidil, maybe making it more dangerous than it already is. I won't go over the risk of oral minoxidil here, but I have made several videos on that subject that I'll link below. Anyways, my first impression from all this hype is that this is basically just broccoli sprouts 2.0. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, a couple of years ago, Reddit got extremely excited over a hilariously stupid post from some random Redditor who claims that he found quote, a theory that explains everything, unquote. This theory was based on this idea that by eating large amounts of broccoli sprouts, you could stop hair loss because broccoli lowered DHT through a mechanism that didn't involve the 5-AR enzyme that finasteride and dutasteride block. So, supposedly, just by eating broccoli, you could save your hair without having to worry about taking medicines like finasteride. Of course, the theory was complete bullshit, and the post in question was riddled with hilariously stupid scientific errors, such as confusing sulforaphane with sulfotransfer amongst many other blunders. But since most people on Tressless are terrified of an asteroid and desperate for any alternative imaginable, the Post told Tressless what they wanted to hear and they all went crazy over it because they thought it was their ticket out of having to use a 5-AR inhibitor to stop their hair loss. The Post was so popular, in fact, that it became the most popular post in Tressless's 12-year history, I kid you not. It has since been surpassed by a couple of newer posts, but the fact that it ever got this many upvotes to begin with is a disaster disgrace, and the hair loss community should feel embarrassed about it. But then something happened that they weren't counting on. Me. I created a video on the broccoli post, and believe me when I tell you, I didn't want to. The only reason I did, though, is because I was getting literally hundreds of comments every single day demanding that I give my opinion on what they were calling the biggest scientific breakthrough in hair loss history. So, I did what they asked, and I made a video on the broccoli post. Except, instead of affirming anything, I instead completely dismantled every single point in that stupid post, and Reddit has never forgiven me for it since. Thankfully though, because of my debunking, we almost never hear about broccoli anymore, and thank God for that, because as angry as Trestles was that I debunked their stupid theory, deep down, they know I am right, which is why broccoli has become a meme that people joke about today, rather than anybody taking seriously. A lot of people, they thought my video was too mean, but the only reason I was harsh was because the post wasn't just presented as some sort of academic curiosity, it was instead treated as a huge scientific breakthrough, when in reality, it was complete bullshit shit, and that kind of pretentiousness deserves to be smacked down. If the post was just some guy asking something like, hey, what do you guys think about this data on sulforaphane and hair loss? It seems pretty interesting, don't you think? Then that would have been no big deal. Instead, the post was literally titled, quote, the theory that explains everything, unquote. This post was blowing up, and it was only a matter of time before some huge channel started talking about it. Had I not intervened when I did and shot down that post, the broccoli thing would have gone viral. And and we would have never heard the fucking end of it. So, I really think the hair loss community should be thanking me for stopping this nonsense dead in its tracks before it got completely out of hand. I'll go ahead and post my broccoli video below though if you want to see me tear down this embarrassing broccoli theory, but hopefully this is something that never gains traction ever again. So, is grapefruit the sequel to broccoli? Well, opinions on grapefruit are much more mixed compared to the broccoli theory. In the case of grapefruit, nobody can seem to decide whether it is beneficial, harmful, or does nothing. It turns out, though, that doctors have known for a long time that eating grapefruit or drinking grapefruit juice affects the metabolism of lots of different types of medications. Apparently, someone on Reddit just found out about this, which led to a torrent of posts on the subject on the Tressless subreddit. So, grapefruit, it absolutely can influence a lot of drugs in the market, and in fact, a lot of drugs will have disclaimers warning people not to consume grapefruit juice due to its role in influencing the metabolism of these drugs. Even some recreational street drugs are influenced by grapefruit by making them more powerful, like ketamine and opioids. So, as silly as the whole grapefruit juice thing seems to be, I wouldn't say it is the successor to the broccoli theory, because the broccoli theory was just flat out stupid, plain and simple. Grapefruit, on the other hand, does affect a lot of drugs, so it 
is a valid thing to question if grapefruit consumption can affect hair loss drugs like finasteride, dutasteride, or minoxidil. So, we hair loss witchers, we really need to know, does grapefruit affect hair loss drugs? And if it does, does it make them more potent, make them weaker, or possibly make them more dangerous? Let's go balls deep, activate our witcher senses, and find out if grapefruit is a potion worth taking. So. Before we find out if hair loss drugs can be affected by grapefruit, we first need to find out why grapefruit has any effect on drugs at all and whether that mechanism can also apply to hair loss drugs. It turns out the reason grapefruit has any effects at all on any drugs is because it contains a class of chemicals called furanocoumarins. This was shown in this article from 1999. This is what these chemicals look like. These chemicals occur in other fruit juices too, like orange juice, but they are found at the highest levels in grapefruit juice. Now. The reason furanocoumarins are important is that they interfere with a very important class of enzymes in the body called cytochrome P450, also known as CYP450 enzymes. There are at least 50 different types of these CYP450 enzymes in humans, and actually over 300,000 types of these enzymes have been found in animals, plants, bacteria, and even viruses. Here is the structure of one of these enzymes called CYP3A4. This turns out to be one of the CYP450 enzymes affected by grapefruit juice. The main function of these enzymes in the body is to deactivate toxins that we might eat. From the point of view of the human body, all drugs, even something as simple as aspirin, are considered toxins and thus need to be metabolized and excreted quickly to avoid damage to our bodies. So these CYP450 enzymes are mostly located in the intestines and the liver where they act as a first line of defense against toxins. Drugs have to get past them in order to get into the bloodstream. So these enzymes oxidize drugs in the intestines and in the liver, which usually inactivates the drugs, but there are some drugs where the metabolite of the drug is actually the active form of the drug. A classic example of this is minoxidil. Minoxidil is not active in its pure form. However, when it is metabolized in the body, it is converted into minoxidil sulfate, which is the active form of the drug. That means that while CYP450 enzymes can inactivate drugs, they can also activate drugs and potentiate their effects. There are also some drugs that could potentiate or diminish the effects of the CYP450 system. All these interactions are the reason that taking drugs in combination can have complicated effects. Taking drugs together can sometimes cancel out their effects or can sometimes make these drugs more toxic. This article covers the effects of these enzymes on cardiac and cancer drugs. It points out that, quote, the CYP450 enzymes oxidize, reduce, or hydrolyze their substrates, resulting in loss of pharmacological activity or activation of prodrugs, unquote. It shows in this pie graph what percentage of cardiovascular and cancer drugs are affected by each enzyme, as well as the effects of aspects like sex, inflammation, and age on these enzymes. As you can see, it is the CYP3A4-5 enzyme that has the most effect on these drugs. Now, I bring up this article that includes the effects of CYP450 enzymes on cardiovascular drugs because people sometimes forget that minoxidil is actually a cardiovascular drug that was repurposed to treat hair loss. Like I just mentioned, minoxidil is a prodrug that is metabolized into minoxidil sulfate, which is the active form of the drug. Some of the Tressless posts question whether grapefruit juice will affect the metabolism of minoxidil. However, minoxidil is converted into minoxidil sulfate not by CYP450, but instead by a different enzyme called sulfotransferase. As the article says, quote, sulfonation can also bioactivate some substrates. This can result in a benign, more metabolically active form, for example, minoxidil, unquote. So minoxidil is not activated by the CYP450 enzymes, so grapefruit won't have any effect on it. It is activated by the sulfotransferase enzyme. This turns out to be especially important because it is possible to enhance the sulfotransferase enzyme through the use of topical tretinoin, which can enhance the effects of topical minoxidil and can turn minoxidil non-responders into responders. I've done a video on that, which I'll link below. Well, grapefruit doesn't affect minoxidil at all, but what about finasteride and dutasteride? After all, grapefruit interferes with the CYP450 enzymes. Because of the effect of grapefruit on these enzymes, a lot of drugs are affected by grapefruit. Here is just part of a long table that shows just some of the drugs that are affected by grapefruit. Remember that both finasteride and dutasteride were developed originally as drugs to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia, also known as BPH. In this article, drugs that were used to treat BPH were tested for interactions with 
food, including grapefruit. Alpha-blocking drugs like the drug Tamsulosin were found to interact with grapefruit. As the article says, quote, In view of the fact that the medication is metabolized in the liver by CYP3A4, Tamsulosin shows potential to interact with grapefruit juice, unquote. With finasteride and dutasteride, the authors of the study don't mention any interaction with grapefruit, but they do say that there are some very minor decreases in the maximum serum concentration of these drugs when taken with food. However, the authors feel that these changes are of no clinical significance, and they conclude that either drug can be taken with or without food in the stomach. If we go back to the table I showed before that lists all the drug interactions with grapefruit, you see that in the category of drugs used to treat BPH, shown here as urinary tract agents, finasteride and dutasteride are not listed. So, from this data, you might conclude that finasteride and dutasteride aren't metabolized by the CYP450 enzymes and therefore aren't affected by grapefruit. But that's not actually true. In this study from 1996, it was felt that finasteride actually was metabolized by the CYP450 enzymes. Like finasteride, dutasteride also is metabolized by the CYP450 enzyme system, specifically the enzyme CYP3A4. We know from other research that grapefruit inactivates this particular enzyme, though it also affects other CYP450 enzymes as well. So, one would predict from all of this that grapefruit could increase both finasteride and dutasteride blood levels by inhibiting CYP450 enzymes. This is pretty clear, but there is still a lot of misinformation about this interaction on the internet. For example, on a website called ZocDoc, it is stated that, quote, However, the subfamily of cytochrome P450 enzymes that metabolizes finasteride is the 3A4 group, which is not known to be inhibited by grapefruit, so this should not be increasing your blood levels of finasteride, unquote. Well, we just saw that grapefruit does inhibit the 3A4 enzyme, so that's not true. There's also people who get the interaction backwards. For example, this site says to avoid grapefruit juice with finasteride because the furano coumarin in grapefruit juice neutralizes the effectiveness of finasteride. That's also not true. If anything, grapefruit juice would enhance the effectiveness of finasteride by increasing blood levels. So, despite this interaction, it does not seem to be clinically significant. If you look at a website like eHealthMe.com, which uses an FDA database of drug interactions, no interaction between finasteride and grapefruit is listed. A medical site like Medscape states that grapefruit will increase the levels or effects of finasteride, but the effect is minor and the significance is unknown. Similarly, WebMD lists a minor interaction between grapefruit and finasteride. But another site, Drugs.com, does not list any interactions between finasteride and grapefruit, while it does list interactions between other drugs drugs in grapefruit, as you can see here with the drug diltiazem. So if grapefruit can intensify the effects of finasteride or dutasteride, is that something to worry about? Well, no, not really. Finasteride is a very safe drug even at extremely high doses. Even with single doses up to 400 milligrams and multiple doses of 80 milligrams per day for three months, the drug is still well tolerated, and there have been no reports of overdoses from finasteride. The same thing is true with dutasteride, since up to 10 times the recommended a dose has been given to patients for up to six months without any problems whatsoever. So, slight increases in blood levels of dutasteride due to a CYP3A4 inhibitor like grapefruit is very unlikely to be of any clinical significance. It's also true that the 5AR blocking effects of finasteride tend to level out at the 1 to 5 milligram per day dose, and the effects of dutasteride top off at 2.5 milligrams per day. So, increasing the blood levels with grapefruit is not likely to have much more effect on the effects of these drugs. So, to summarize all this data, grapefruit has no effect on minoxidil metabolism whatsoever, so don't worry about grapefruit and minoxidil at all. On the other hand, grapefruit might increase finasteride and dutasteride blood levels a little bit, but this interaction is not clinically significant since both finasteride and dutasteride have diminishing returns and their peak effects occur at the same doses that are used clinically. I mean, theoretically, maybe you can make 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride more potent by drinking grapefruit juice, but this has never been clinically tested, so it's anyone's guess just how effective this would be exactly. So if you want to make dutasteride more effective, I'd say just go ahead and use more dutasteride. You can go all the way up to 2.5 milligrams per day for double the scalp DHT suppression of finasteride and 30% more scalp DHT suppression compared to 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride. And I talk about this in my perfect dose of dutasteride video, which I'll link below. So please,
days. Go ahead and enjoy your grapefruit or grapefruit juice with the full confidence in knowing that it won't cause any harm. If anything, it may even help a little bit, but I wouldn't expect any miracles. I really don't think there's any hair loss sufferer on planet Earth whose hair loss fight rests on the fulcrum of a grapefruit. Whatever the case, I hope this video has made some sense of it all and maybe cleared up some of the misinformation that infests the hair loss forums and subreddits. But anyways, thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.